Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going through an example on how to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a three by three matrix. Given that it's a three by three matrix, that means that there will be exactly three eigenvalues, and then we can find an eigenvector that corresponds to each of those. So when we first get started, we need to write what the matrix A minus lambda I is. And basically we just multiply lambda to the identity matrix and then subtract that. So that's why we're seeing this subtraction of lambda along the main diagonal of the matrix. So once we have this matrix A minus lambda I, then we want to set it up so we can take the determinant of it. And the way that I like to do that is by rewriting the first column and the second column to the right of the determinant bars. And then all we need to do is just draw diagonal lines going from the top left to the bottom right. So we'll have this one, and then we have this guy, and we have this guy. What we do is we take the, the product of the elements that fall on each of these blue lines, and we add them all together. And then we do the same thing, but we subtract all of the products of the elements that fall on these green lines going from top right to bottom left. You could do this by writing out the full version of cofactor expansion, but I find that this is easier or just at least faster. And, and again, what we wanna do is we wanna set this equal to zero, and now we're going to be looking for the roots. So if we write out the sums of the products of the blue lines, and then subtract the products of the elements that fall on the green lines, we get this big long expression. And fortunately, when we have zeros in the matrix, a lot of these things end up going to zero, or a lot of these terms end up going to zero. So we have one here. So this whole term is zero, this whole term is zero, this whole term is zero, and this whole term is zero. So we can clean this up a little bit more. And again, we're gonna find things cancel out. We have 240 minus 240 and minus 120 lambda plus 120 lambda. And if we just keep going with the simplification, we ultimately find the three roots are 2, 34, and 0. And these will be each of our three eigenvalues. And now to find the eigenvectors or a corresponding eigenvector to each eigenvalue, we have to go one at a time finding the null space of a minus lambda i. But each time we substitute in the actual eigenvalue for lambda. So in this case, uh, when we're looking for a corresponding eigenvector for the eigenvalue number one, well, the first eigenvalue that we're looking at, its value is two. So we're going to plug in a two into this expression. And now all we're doing is we're looking for the null space of this matrix. So we have set it up as an augmented matrix full of zeros on the right hand side. And when we find the null space, it turns out that the null space is going to be the eigenspace space of this matrix. So if we just go ahead and perform some elementary row operations, we're going to reduce it down to this matrix. And from here, we can rewrite it as a system of linear equations. So the first line here is saying that x2 is equal to 0. The second line is saying that x3 is equal to 0. And if we're looking for something for x1, we can pull it out of the third line here and just say that x1 is just equal to x1. It's basically our independent variable. And what we can do now is we can rewrite this. This is basically the solution uh, to the null space in parametric form. But we can rewrite this and in vector form where we just put in the values for each element. So x1 is just going to be equal to x1, x2 is equal to 0, and x3 is equal to 0. Um, what we can also do right now is basically we're saying that this is actually the eigenspace. This is the null space of the matrix, which is also the eigenspace. And we can pick any value for the first element as long as the other two elements are 0. So we can drop that subscript and just have it written as x, 0, 0. So this is the eigenspace. And what you can do is you can pull out the x and rewrite what we have left. So that would just be 1, 0, 0. And basically what's inside the brackets here, this vector is a basis for our eigenspace, but it's also an eigenvector that belongs to lambda one. So we can even go up here and uh, draw a little arrow and say that this is one of our eigenvectors that belongs to lambda one. And really any vector that has this form, so basically any multiple of one zero zero is an eigenvector that belongs to lambda one. But if the question's asking you just for an eigenvector, just one example, then you can just write one single example. All right, so we're gonna move on to finding an eigenvector that belongs to lambda two. So we're going to do this in exactly the same way. We're gonna set up this expression where we have the null space of a minus lambda two i. And I just noticed uh, that up here earlier, I wrote these subscripts as lambda two. I think I got confused because the value was two, but we should really correct that. This was lambda one, 
lambda one and lambda one. Now we are subtracting down here, lambda two across the main diagonal of each of these elements in the matrix. All right, so we wanna apply some elementary row operations and ultimately just simplify the matrix until we get this guy. And from here, we can rewrite it as a system of linear equations again. So that first row is telling us that we have eight x one minus nine x three is equal to zero. And then the second row is telling us that we have three x two minus four x three is equal to zero. So if we rewrite x1 in terms of x3, we get um, nine over eight x3. And then if we write x2 in terms of x3, then we get four thirds x3. And if we write x3 in terms of x3, it's just itself, it is the independent variable. So this is the solution to the null space in parametric form. And we can rewrite this in vector form like this, where we just plug in each of these values for our elements. And again, we can drop the subscript here because this vector has the form where just the first element is 9 eighths the size of the third element. The second element is 4 thirds the size of the third element. And uh, that's really all the information. So having the subscript of a three there is really overkill. All we need to say is communicate that yeah, this is the relationship between the elements. Now we can clean this up a little bit because sometimes fractions are just a little bit nasty to have inside of vectors. So what we can do is we can actually just multiply each element by 24 and that's going to give us basically 27x, 32x, and 24x. All right, so that might be a little bit of a cleaner vector to look at. This is either of these can basically be describe our eigenspace because they're saying exactly the same thing. And uh, what we want to do is we just want to pull out that x, and this vector that we're left over with is an eigenvector belonging to lambda two. And like we're with the same logic as before, actually any multiple of this vector is also an eigenvector belonging to two. But if the problem is just looking for a single example, then we can write it up here as an eigenvector belonging to uh, this eigenvalue. All right, so let's do the same for lambda three. We wanna set up the exact same expression where we have the null space of a minus lambda three i. And because lambda three is actually equal to zero, when we work this out, this is basically ends up being the same thing as just taking the null space of matrix A. Um, but regardless, this is still equivalent to the null space of A minus lambda three I. All right, so now we wanna go and just perform our elementary row operations again. And we're left over with this matrix right here. So what we can do is we can write the, uh, we can convert this to a system of linear equations again. So the first line is x1 minus 135 x3 equals zero. And the second line gives us x2 plus 10 x3 equals zero. And now what we can do is we can just write x1 in terms of x3. So that's just going to be equal to x1 is 135 x3. And x2, if we rearrange this in terms of x3, we get this is equal to negative 10 x3. And if we wanted to write x3 in terms of x3, again, that is just x3, it is the independent variable. So just like before, this is the solution in parametric form, we can rewrite this in vector form. And like before, we can just drop that subscript right away. So we have 135 x, negative 10 x, and x. So any vector that has this form, if we consider all of those vectors, that gives us the eigenspace. And if we just pull out that x, um, we're going to get this vector where we have inside 135, negative 10, and 1. And exactly like before, this is an eigenvector that belongs to lambda 3. So we can go ahead and come back up here and just add that in where we had all these other guys. And there we go. We have come up with the solution to the original problem that was asking us to find the eigenvalues and a corresponding eigenvector for each of them. So we have three eigenvalues and then we have an eigenvector that corresponds to each.